Okay, hello, hello, hello. Coming to you live again from the Delphian School. Uh, this is not science, which we just finished, I think, with uh, Marty and James. This is character education um, ethics. Character education ethics, going deeper into making good choices. Um, so today we're going to keep our, our progress on the ethics book. This is the ethics book we've been studying about. We have learned about um, good and evil. We've learned about making good decisions. We've learned about using reason. Uh, we've learned about the parts of life. I'm not going to review them all in detail here, but the parts of life, which are um, yourself, your family, groups, mankind, um, the life, every other kind of life, flower, living creatures, etc. the physical world around us, the spiritual world or the artistic world, you might say, and then infinity or what we call the God dynamics. So those are the parts of life dynamics. Now, so we got last time up to page, I think like 70 or um, 75. So what I want to do now is welcome everybody back. Uh, you know, I want to remind you that this is a part three of a seminar that we were already doing before. So if you missed the first two, I'm sorry. I'll do my best to address your questions. I'll do my best to pick up the pieces where we left off. I've just put up a slide that um, summarizes what we got to in the last uh, segment of this webinar. And we're gonna review these couple of pages and then come forward with some assignments, okay? Uh, reminder to put all of your questions or all of your essays and all of your answers in the question and answer section, not in the chat section, because that's turned off. And I'll do my best to get to all of them. Uh, we have some more challenging material today and some tougher questions you might say and some slightly longer essay assignments. So to the degree you guys answer them well, I may not be able to uh, share with you everything that you share with me, okay? All right, well, let's get started. Let's get started. No reason to waste any more time. So we, we got to a, a point last week where we defined ethics and ethics are defined as reason. Ethics are reason. We're reading, by the way, of course, from the book and this book is available to you from the links that you've been shared with. And we're studying and continuing to progress from the learning guide itself. This is the learning guide. This is called the ethics book course, of course. Here it is. And we are already on page three of that learning guide. So a quick review, ethics are reason. Ethics actually consists of rationality toward the highest level of survival for the individual, the future race, the group, mankind, and the other dynamics taken up collectively. So dynamics we reviewed very quickly. Those are those eight parts of life. We've mentioned a few of them, self, future race group, collectively, as a whole. So thinking them all together, what do they mean? Reason is your greatest weapon. If you use reason in your life, you will do things that help your dynamics. Then you say your ethics, then you can say your ethics are in, like they're occurring, they are present, you're using them. If you do not use reason, you can do things to harm your dynamics then your ethics are out. So we're just doing a quick review of what we finished with last week. People are basically good. They want to have their ethics in. Okay, good. So now we are stepping into the new assignment. However, let's remind ourselves that all of you had a homework assignment. I don't know if you did it because I didn't get any emails or essays that I remember. Um, if I did, they were a while ago, but I don't think anybody did. And the assignment was think of an important situation in your life where you need to make a decision that will affect how well you are surviving. Make your decision with your ethics in and do what you decided to do. Write down what the situation was and why you decided as you did. So if you did do that and you wanna share it with me briefly in the question and answer, I'll review it if I can. Um, you can also email me at events at delphian.org. All right, so now we're going to take up the new topic of today, deeper look at making decisions and the different tools we can use to make decisions, okay? So here we go. And then we're going to have our first assignment. So, all right, so just going back here, people want to have their ethics in. People are basically good. They want to have their ethics in. But sometimes people make mistakes. Even I do. We all do. Sometimes people don't use reason. He's not looking too good, huh? To omit means to leave out or not do. In this case, the, the animal's not getting fed, right? 
An omission is something that is left out or something that is not done. To commit means to do something. Ouch, on the tail. A commission, a commission is something done. Sometimes people do harm on their dynamics by doing something harmful, an act of commission. Looks like he's hitting the guy. Or not doing something they should have done, an act of omission. And looks like mother's saying, I got a birthday card from everyone except, so somebody didn't send her a birthday card, which was an act of omission. Now here's the summary. An act of omission, which is not doing something, or commission, doing something. An act of omission or commission, which does the least good for the least number of dynamics, or the most harm to the greatest number of dynamics, is called an overt act, or an overt for short. So let's go over that again. An act of omission or commission, which does the least good for the least number of dynamics, or the most harm to the greatest number of dynamics, is called an overt act, or an overt for short. Okay, great. So now, let me stop sharing here with you guys. Come down in the question and answer period, which we have actively going as well. I hope I see some familiar names to earlier times. Okay, so different people, everybody's saying hello, 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 hello. Yes, let's see who's here. My glasses I did not bring. Uh, Anya, Tristan, Will, hello. Um, Akanesha, Akanesha uh, Anja. And hello, hello, hello from all of you. Hello, hello, hello to all of you. Looks like Serena, who we had before, Nathan. Very nice to see all of you. I'll pull this computer just a little closer to me. Angela, Miles, nice to see all of you, by the way. Very, very nice to see all of you. All right, so now we're going to give you, let me just get rid of a couple of these answers real quick to separate out. I'm gonna give you the first assignment. This is the first assignment. If you wanna share with me that larger assignment that you did, you can, but now let me give you your first one. I want you to give me an essay, or if you have your famous demo kit, this is the demo kit with all the pieces, and if you've been studying at home, and you know the study tools that we use here at Delphi, and you're familiar with this, you would have this demonstration kit with you at home. So you can use this if you wanna do a demonstration, or you can send me an essay. And what I want you to do is write me an essay that briefly notes an overt of commission, so an overt of something you did, or an example of it, not necessarily your overt, but an example of it, or an overt of omission. So give me an example. One is a doing this. You do something that's harmful to several of your dynamics or failing to do something that could be considered an overt, which is harmful to some of your dynamics, okay? So go ahead and um, write that down. And here we're going to write a done on our check sheet like we always do. Anytime we finish this step, I just wrote it off that we read that. So if you could share, if you could share in your answers here, that assignment, an overt of commission or an overt of omission, that would be very, very helpful. And I'll get to reading them as soon as they pour in here, okay? And if you have questions about what we're doing today or you feel you need me to catch you up in some way, just let me know and I'll do my best to do that. Hello to all of you that have joined us, by the way. We've got a nice number of like 32 people joining us today, which is really, really nice. Hello, AZ. Just getting rid of all your hellos. Okay, so now. Um, Anjali asks, what is rationality? You know, we covered that, I think, the week before, but rationality stands for rational. If you're rational, you're thinking clearly. You're making good decisions. You're looking at the information and the facts and everything in front of you and you are um, making the right choice, basically. You're making the right choice as to what to do. So rationality is using reason to make good decisions. Okay. Um, somebody said, I sent it. Uh, Serena, okay, Serena, if you did say something, send something today, please send it in the question and answer box as well, okay? So I'm still waiting for some answers. I'm not sure if there's a technical issue here. I'm sure if there was, James would, Alert us, looks like we're up to almost 39 people joining us today, which is really, really nice, guys. So demonstrate or write an essay that gives you an example of an overt of commission or an overt of omission. And I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to get those answers into the question and answer period box.
course, you know, guys, I do need you to answer or else I have nothing to do for a minute or two while I'm waiting for your answers. So an overt of commission or an overt of omission. Looks like we're up to even more guys, more people coming in. We should get some messages coming in now. All right, still waiting for answers. Maybe all of you guys, you know, if you did a, if you did demonstrations, that's excellent. Maybe you can put a little note in the question and answer that says, I did the demonstration, so I'm not answering the essay. And I'll give you just another minute or two to address that. And if not, we'll move on to the next step. But what we're looking for is an example of an overt of commission where you commit and do something or an overt of omission where you don't do something. Hope you guys are having a good day, by the way, and I hope you had a good weekend. For the most part, I know I did, and the weather got really nice up here in Oregon, so I was outside taking a walk and enjoying myself a little bit on Sunday. Of course, in the park with a uh, good sensible distance from everybody as well. James, I imagine you're hearing, we don't have anything coming in on the question and answer, which um, is different than before. I'm just going to come out and come back in. No, no difference. All right. Okay. Yeah. James and I both agree. We're like, I don't know. It's up to you guys. I'm here. We need your feedback and your input. You know, if you're raising your hand, I'm not going to call on you. Uh, the only way I can get to you is if you uh, put your answers in the question and answer section of the, um, of the, uh, not the chat room, but on the webinar here. So put them into the question and answer period. I wonder if some of you are trying and we have maybe a, a little difficulty, but it's very hard for James and I to see that right now. And all of your initial hellos came through, which was very, very good. All right, well, I'm gonna do in the interest of time is move on. And if you guys get some more um, answers, we got a lot of hands being raised. I see that and um, not much I can do there. More people raising their hand. Is our, is our something off? I don't know. Um, well, we're gonna move forward here. Everything looks good from our end. Okay, so what we're going to do, and if there is a technical difficulty on getting the questions in there, I'm really, really sorry, guys. All right, so now we're gonna move forward. Uh, videos on, mute is good. All right, so we're gonna move forward. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check that section off. We're gonna read a couple more pages from the ethics book here, starting with 83. So let's just remind ourselves here, an act of omission or commission which does the least good for the least number of dynamics or the most harm to the greatest number of dynamics is called an overt act or an overt for short. So now let's look at the next section here. This is gonna get a little bit more involved. So why do people do overt acts? It's a good question. Someone may commit an overt without meaning to. Oops, stepped on his foot. Destructive acts are usually done out of fear. You can see that example there. I'll let you look at it just for a second. He's worried about him coming at him and someone may hurt others because he thinks that is the only way that he can survive. People lie because they are afraid of what would happen if they tell the truth. But I didn't hit him, he ran into me. Which of course, going back to the earlier page is a falsehood or is false because look, he put his fist out and took him down. So people lie because they are afraid of what would happen if they tell the truth. Okay, so that brings us to the next assignment and let's hope you guys are alive and can get your answers to me. So here we go. Going down into the question and answer. Yeah, I think it's jammed up, James, but I don't think we know why or how, but I think it's somehow jammed up. If only because everything since the high is not coming in. Uh, a couple of my guys that are participating, can you try to just put a note into the question and answer period of any kind and let's see if we can get your answer. 
here comes James to just kind of look to see if he sees anything that I don't. Hi, everyone. Hello, James. <laughs> you just saw him not too long ago. Yeah, there's nothing there. There we go. Okay. Oh, what's happening there? We're just going to keep scrolling down there. Oh, I see. We got so lots many of examples. Answers. Thank you, everyone. I uh, had tons of examples, but there was a lot of space in between for some reason. All right. Well, excellent. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, so yeah. th thank you, everyone who has been submitting your answers, and um, we will get to these here. And I will review them. If I don't, if I don't have time right now, I'll review them. Right. Excellent. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so let me just give a couple examples. Here is one from Nora. An example of an orbit of commission is if someone kicked someone else. Agreed. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Someone's here from Pakistan. Very, very nice. Very nice. Yes, I see that you guys answered it. Um, someone here, here says uh, Mackenzie Reeves. An orbit of commission ignored her brother when he was talking to her. Very good, especially if he was really interested, right? and wanted to know what's what, right? Um, somebody says, I broke the glass. Very, very good. And someone said, can you give us an example? Well, now we are, now we're giving you an example. So someone said, if you were told to feed the cats and you didn't, and they, well, they died or they were hungry for too long, that would not be good. I definitely agree. Thank you for all your answers, by the way, that are coming in now that were un, I could not see them. An overt of commission, someone commits murder, definitely. I'm going to hope that nobody that I know has done that personally, and nobody on this uh, webinar has done that. And there's a couple of people said I did a demonstration, right? Very good. Here is um, Caitlin, or Catherine says, uh, Denali said he didn't unload the dishwasher when mom asked him uh, about 800 times. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, I have to say. Maybe three or four times, right? Uh, okay, and here's another example. If someone doesn't stand up for someone who's being bullied, excellent, excellent example. Very, very good. Um, okay, good. So now let's move forward on a couple more examples. I'll cover a couple if I can. Norder brother, excellent, excellent, very good. Hello from different people. Okay, good. I can see you're all there. All right. If you tore a book, if you tore a book, that's an overt act. Yeah, you know, if you did it accidentally, one could argue maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But if you tore it and then purposely, and then you didn't tell anybody, that definitely would be an overt act, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, great, so let's carry on now as well. Um, if someone robs a bank, excellent example, excellent example. Of course, if you need to take a break to get a snack or use the restroom, that's totally fine. Totally, totally fine. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's move forward now to the next assignment. Sorry for that little technical difficulty we have. So we just went through pages 83, 86 that gave a couple of examples of an overt. And I would like you to give me an example of an overt that was done for one of the reasons on the pages that we just studied. So that was, he was in, afraid that something was gonna happen to him. Maybe he was afraid of telling the truth and the consequence of it. Um, maybe he did it accidentally, but he's still, it's still an overt. So go ahead and shoot me now a couple more examples of overts, one done for one of the reasons that we shared in the book just a minute ago. And now we're up to date on your answers, so I'll be able to do it. Here is Anjali saying, I did not make a salad for my mom. Okay, okay, that's an omission, especially if, you know, if you were going to do it just out of your good heart, all right, a little bit of an overt, mostly it's not a good deed done, but let's say your mom is working hard and she needs you to make the salad, and you kind of agreed to make the salad, then definitely that would, would uh, become more like an overt now, right? Someone punches someone because they were threatened, like the example in the book, right? We think something's gonna happen to us, and it may or may not, but then we react, and that can be the overt now. Purposely doing something to hurt yourself, definitely, definitely that would be an overt, and I hope that none of us are doing that. That's not obviously a, a good thing to do in life. So your examples are very good, and here they come. They're flying, and I love them. Um, not doing, not juicing your mom's cucumbers when she asks you, says Serena. Okay, excellent. And when someone's threatened, they will do one of those over. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, if you need to take a break, someone, a couple of people are asking if I need to take a break to do something, that's totally fine. You'll pick up right where we left off. You'll do your best. Um, 
I see. So here was a friend, Mackenzie Reeves says, a friend was messing with my praying mantis cage. I thought they were doing something on purpose, maybe to hurt them, and I pushed them away. Very good, feeling a little bit threatened. Um, breaking a glass, and it's not yours, so you hide the fact that you broke it. Excellent examples, excellent examples. And here is from Amelia. If you are protecting yourself and accidentally hit someone and then lied about doing it. Very good example, very good example. All right, we have similar examples about similar punching, right? That's very good. And here's from Analia, I did not water the lawn. Not good. I mean, hopefully you can water it the next day, but not good to do it for several days for sure, because then the lawn would not be doing too well. Uh, okay, very good. Um, Nathan, I don't know exactly what to say about your question. What about dad? I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I'm gonna move forward here. And hello, Naomi, nice to have you here and welcome back. Okay, good. And someone says, I, this is um, Riley Mervin. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I forgot to feed my dogs, but said I did when I did it. Oops, 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 oops. You know, you're not the first person and it may not be the last time that someone does that, but it's very good to admit it and then to recognize, okay, how can I just get more honest about it next time? Because most important is that the dog gets fed and also important is that you always speak the truth. Okay, good, excellent examples, guys. So we're now gonna move on and I'm going to do the next section of the reading here, okay? Excellent, excellent examples. Love your guys' uh, participation. And here we go for the next section to be read. Okay, so we're now gonna read pages 87 through 95. Now this gets a little bit more involved and I hope you can track with me, okay? If you have questions, let me know. So for some reason, a person may do something out ethics in some area of life. When that happens, a lot of other things can happen. Okay, you guys gave some great examples so you can think of those while we're looking at this. For one thing, since the person doesn't want to do harmful things, he will try to find some way to explain how what he did wasn't so bad. So inside you're basically good. You do something bad and you don't really want to do that. It's not really how you want to live your life. So since the person doesn't want to do harmful things, he will try to find some way to explain how what he did wasn't so bad. Well, if I hadn't hit him, he would have hit me. I don't know if that's true. This is called justifying the over. This is called justifying the over. Sometimes an over can be justified by making the thing that was harmed seem not very important. Oh, he's not that good a player. Mm. That makes him less important and justifies the fact that he hit him. A motive, you guys have probably heard this word before, a motive is a reason for doing something. So it can be very positive, like why do I come to work? Or why does a person play sports? Or why did we give the ball to Michael Jordan to make the shot to make the winning point? You know, you have a reason for doing something. However, when something harmful is done to someone, he may consider that it gives him a reason to commit an overt. So something harmful that is received by someone is called a motivator. So you get the idea, it's a motivator. I'm receiving it, and it's something harmful done to me, giving me a justifier or a reason, in my mind at least, for committing an overt. So these are deeper concepts we're getting into right now. I hope you can track with me. Some of you may have studied this information before. Some of you, it may be the first time. So when someone has a motivator, he can use it to justify an overt. Don't you remember when you ran into me last game? And if you remember the picture, he did not run into him. He ran towards him and the guy put his arm out. If someone commits an overt but didn't have a motivator, he tends to believe that he has received a motivator. It's amazing now, right? So he committed an overt, but he didn't have a motivator. So he tends to believe in his mind here that he has received a motivator. Uh, you, you, you hit me first, not true. Someone who has committed an overt but didn't have a motivator can feel like he has to have a motivator. He might complain even when nothing was done to him. So you get this, right? Someone who has committed an overt but didn't have a motivator before it can feel like he has to have a motivator. He might complain even when nothing was done to him. You threw it too hard. So this is something that happened in basketball prior, probably before the overt occurred, and he is using it to give him a reason why he's going to knock him in the head. Not very smart. 
All of these things can be used to justify, remember justify, more overs. And remember justify, giving you a reason, giving you a reason, valid or not, usually not valid, always not valid, to commit that over. All of these things can be used to justify more overs. And here's the last page we're going to read right now. Things get worse and worse. Okay, so if you've seen, we're basically looking at a cycle, right? We have these parts of life. We do something harmful. Maybe we don't really mean to do it, or we're a little bit afraid, or we just don't quite face up. I had to feed the dog, but I didn't face up to the fact that I was playing computer games instead. So we don't do it. And now we have to find reasons for reasons for well the dog bit me or the dog was mean or the dog stayed outside too long or um, i was busy with my homework or my teacher would have gotten angry if i didn't do my homework when we actually should have fed the dog just as an example okay so now let's go to these are some thick concepts and i hope 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 you're hanging with me so now what i want you to do now this is the bigger assignment there's obviously a bigger one coming in just a minute but i want you to make up an over just make one up um, if you want it to be something actual that you did, that's fine. I'm not asking you to face your, your own uh, actions of omission or commission that were good or bad right now. But what I want you to do is make up an over and give three examples of justifications for it. So it's just one over it right now and give me three, if you can give two excellent, but three would be even perfect, three examples of justifications for that over. And now we're going back into our question and answer and I'll try to catch up a little bit if we can here. There we go, there we are. Okay, great, some more examples have come in, I love it. All right, um, yes, very good. That example, we've gone over there. So someone said here, um, it looks like Izzy, forgot to water the plants and then said I did, and I refused to water them that day so I could be right and then they die. Very good example, very good example. Not so good to refuse to water them and have them die, but very good example. Okay, somebody, yes, that makes sense, very good. Yes, so the justifier is like an excuse. That's exactly right. It's a reason to excuse your over it. It's making less of what you did or making less of the person or thing that you harmed, and then it makes it a little bit more okay that I committed the over it. All right, so let's get your examples coming through now. Um, here they come. Killing someone, because he killed someone I care about, because he owed me money, because he was a bad person. Excellent, so there's the overt. This is from um, Sophie. I'm, I'm gonna kill someone, yikes. So why am I gonna do it? I'm gonna justify it. Because he killed someone I cared about, or he owed me money and would not pay me, or because he was just a bad person. Now that brings up a whole nother example, which I won't get into, but obviously a policeman who's gonna kill a terrorist that's about to kill 100 other people, he might have to kill that terrorist. That is probably not an over, right? Because it's helping so much more than what it's harming. So every once in a while, we do have that situation. Okay, coming through a few of the examples here that are coming in, slapping your brother because he's annoying. And this is from no name. He's bothering me or it's just, it's not fair. So excellent example, bullying or pushing around your younger brother. I love it. Okay, someone says, so what happens when someone blames it on you? Well, truth is truth. I don't know the exact example, but yes, it happens that a friend or someone we don't know says, this person broke the glass and actually you didn't. All you can there now is tell the truth and just say, I didn't do it. I don't know if he did, but I know that I didn't do it. Of course, you have to be honest and not change the story to something untruthful. So if I broke a plate and then I hid the pieces, says Amelia, um, lied to my mom, and then she discovered it. And then I just kept doing that because I didn't want to get in trouble. Here's an example of hitting my sister, says Caitlin, because she hit me first. She took my Lego piece because she wasn't good at soccer. All very good justifiers. All very good justifiers. Okay, good. How are we doing on time? Okay, great. So I'm gonna move through a few more examples here and make sure we have enough time to finish the webinar. Um, Okay, got it, Nora. If Bob poured water over Joe's head and then said he was looking too hot as if he needed it. Yeah, that's kind of cute and funny too. So if someone stole money from a bank, they took money from the person, the bank was mean to people, okay, like a mean teller. 
they wouldn't give a loan to me. Ah, that's a very good one. You needed money, so now you're going to go steal it because you couldn't get the loan. All right, good. So let me just go through a few more examples here. Yeah, Nathan, so what happens when someone blames you? We discussed that, all right? You just got to be honest. You have to face exactly what you did because sometimes it's a gray area, right? Sometimes, Nathan, maybe you did do something, but then the person across from you is blaming you for more because they're a little bit angry, they're justifying. Well, you got to look at what you did and sometimes be as responsible as you can for your actions as well as your friends. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples here. A lot of people are asking what about the blame thing, so I think we've answered that well. Um, from Anila, An uh, Anjali, um, uh, I can't quite read that, so sorry, I'm so sorry. Mm, okay, got it, thank you, Riley. That's a long example, but I read it and I understand it, right? So here's one, um, if you blew up a building and then lied to the cops, and then that would be an overt. Exactly. Exactly. Both of those would be overt, right? Okay, great. So let's go a couple more examples here. And uh, Caitlin, I got you gave me a couple great examples already. So someone threw, here's Izzy, someone threw their brother's video game out the window. Justifier. He never plays with me. He's, he lies about those video games. He never plays with me about the video games. He was addicted, so I did it as a favor. And it's all he ever does. <laughs> Very good examples, right? Very good examples. Okay, great. So let's get to the bottom and we'll look at one more. Here's Izzy. Uh, yes, you got that. I got your example, Izzy. That's exactly right. All right. So great examples, guys. How are we doing? Good. So let's move on. We're going to do another short read and then we're going to cover one last big example. Hitting my brother because he hit me, says Naomi. Great examples, guys. Great examples. I stepped on someone's foot because they said something mean. In this case, you did it purposely, huh? Or accidentally, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, great. So now what we're gonna do is move forward here and we're gonna read the last section, guys, okay? Here's the last section for the day. All of these are very, very good examples, by the way. Let me get the screen back up. Uh, come on now, there it goes. Okay. All right, so now here comes, let me sign that essay off for you guys. I don't know if you have the check sheet at home, but we're making great progress. So now we're going to read the last two pages here of something. And then we have a bigger assignment, which I think I'm giving you 10 minutes to do while we're here. All right, so things get worse and worse, as we've seen, right? We, we've already gone through how, how we can commit an overt, and then we want to find a way to justify it. And then we're searching for a motivator, and it just kind of goes on and on. We, we haven't even gotten to the end of how worse it can get. But there is hope, because it can get better. Even if you do the overt, there's a way to take responsibility for it, obviously. So today, we're going to talk about how it's a little bit worse. All during this time, the person will more and more want to stay away from the area where he is doing the overt, because deep down, he doesn't want to do harmful things. Soon, he will want to leave the area completely. Don't think I'll go to the game today. I feel kind of tired. This is called blowing the area. Blow means a sudden and relatively unexplained departure from a job or location or area. People blow because they don't want to do more overts. They may think and say that the motivators are the reason. They are unhappy. But the real problem is the overt acts they did, not what was done to them. Okay, so this is very, very important. We're talking about the blow. That's one piece. And then here, people blow because they don't want to do more overts. They may think and say that the motivators are the reason they are unhappy, but the real problem is the overt acts they did, not what was done to them. Okay, so there's the summary that we're going to discuss just for today. So it can get so bad that you don't want to be in an area or you want to shy away from or not attend uh, something. Maybe not really go to that class or maybe not show up at dinner with the parents because you had a couple of lies. So I'm gonna play computer games instead. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just using that as a couple of examples. So there's lots of different things that can happen. And we each have our own uh, challenges in this area. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, but the whole thing is to realize how we can improve. All right, so I'm gonna get through the final questions and answers in just a second, but here's the last assignment. 
Last assignment for today, and we've got about eight, nine minutes left. So I want you to now write about a time when you experienced, this should be a realistic example, kind of like we've been doing already, where you experienced in yourself or others the things that you just studied about. We're talking in summary now, overts, justification, motivators, and blowing. So in some cases, you maybe didn't blow. So think if there was a time where it got as bad as blowing, where maybe you committed a couple of overts and you had a couple of justifications and a couple of motivators you thought about or occurred or didn't occur. And then there was a bit of a blow. Now, in this case, the blow could even just be a resistance to wanting to go back into that area. Or you just didn't go at all. Maybe you got sick and didn't go to school. Or you committed an overt against some of your friends and then you didn't go the next time they went out to play. So think of those examples and I want you to write that up and put it into the question and answer and I'll share a couple. If it doesn't have to be from your life, but it has to be realistic. It could be actual if you want to share it and you're willing to face that and tell me about it. But it, most importantly, it should just be realistic, okay? All right, so we're gonna come up to, someone says, I think if you explain yourself and they don't believe you, well, I don't know what to say. Just continue to be 100% certain of your story and trust yourself. And I think that eventually, eventually they will believe you because the truth will always come out. Um, this is like an example of a girl, said Caitlin Reeves in gymnastics class who left because she did some horrible things. You're welcome for answering your questions. All right, I threw something at my cousin, says Daphne. Hello, hello, I know you. And I left the tent and I did not come back until we left. Mm, makes sense, very makes sense. That's a good example. I was in a play and I broke someone's prop. I told the director that it was a lousy production. They weren't serious about the show. So I left before the first show. Wow, that's a great example. Very honest statement. So here are, these are great examples coming in on the final assignment, huh? Very, very good. Keep them coming. So this is now, this is from Sophie. I didn't want to go to a Hanukkah party because I was sick, but really, I didn't want to see my cousin. All right, and maybe there was something about that relationship, something harm that had been done to him earlier. I don't know, but thank you so, so much for sharing. Hmm. Not going to gymnastics class. Okay, very good. On the softball team, there was a girl who left because she broke this girl's finger and never came back. Wow. And, and probably, I'm guessing uh, from Serena that she didn't break it on purpose. Uh, maybe the bat, maybe the glove, maybe the ball hit the wrong way. But it's amazing, even if you do it over by accident, how you feel you want to pull yourself back from that area, huh? So you break something, this is Eli, you break something of your parents and they find out you lie. You say you didn't do it. And then you have another lie. And these grow and they multiply. And then you move the subject on because you're feeling guilty. Exactly right, very good example, Eli. And probably not only that, you don't wanna to go to dinner that night with your parents. Or if you do, you're not gonna communicate as much about what happened during the day or how good your day was because your attention is on the lies and the over, right? All right, um, this is an example of someone stealing because they feel people owe them something. Excellent example. All right, I slapped my brother. This is um, uh, Amjad, justified because he was talking rudely. Motivator, he's always teasing me. Blow, I left the room after I break the glass and after I slap him probably. Okay, excellent, very good example. I didn't want to turn in my homework, says uh, time. Oh, hello, Time. I know you barely from your mom and otherwise. Nice to see you, my friend. I didn't want to turn in my homework because I got mad from it and tore it apart. Excellent. I hope you guys are okay. I'm sharing your names. Uh, maybe I'll just give some examples for speed and I won't disclose all the things you're doing out there. Uh, here's a great example. I had to take out the trash instead of going to a party because I hit my friend. All right, got it. Uh, here's a couple more. How are we doing on time? Yeah, we still have a few more times to get through a couple more examples. Um, okay, so this is, uh, someone said yesterday I baked a cake earlier and I ate some of it when I wasn't supposed to, and I went on a bike ride longer than I was supposed to, but I was honest and I told my mom. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good, very good. Um, okay, this is an example of someone who didn't want to attend 
a summer camp uh, because they had a disagreement with a friend. And there's a very good example how it makes you want to shy away or blow from, huh? And here's an example of someone said they hit someone and then didn't want to come back to that friend or to that area. I totally agree. Okay, we got a few more examples here in a few more minutes. All right. So here's an example from one of our attenders that a man was walking by me and I stuck my leg out and he tripped and he fell. And he said, the, the gentleman said, I told my mom and I thought I was scared because he was a big man. And then I said, I had to go use the bathroom. And I didn't come out of that shop for like 30 minutes. Great example. Great, great example. Your examples are all very good, guys. Very good. Uh, here is someone saying, I did something to a friend and I did not want to apologize. Excellent. If your friend hurts another one of your friends and they start a fight with that person, well, that's definitely an over. Okay, so we've got a couple more minutes if you want to shoot. We have a couple more minutes and we're done with the assignments for today. So any final examples about a time when you experienced in yourself or others, so you did it or you saw some real example, a real example, the things that we've studied about here, overts, justification, motivators, and blowing. And then this is going to wrap us up for the day as we're right on schedule till lunchtime here. Oh, some more great examples. Uh, okay. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm not sure if I understand that example. If someone said my brother took gum and the motivator was that he threw something or he could chew something, okay. All right, and we have a couple of goodbyes. Okay, got it. Um, excellent, excellent. Here comes, here comes another great example. Um, so here's an example of somebody who wanted to go to a school but he, when he saw the school, he saw someone before that he had spread bad rumors about and made some of the friends turn on this guy in a bad way. And so he then told his mom that that was not a good school and he really didn't want to go. Excellent examples. Excellent examples. Okay, guys, I'm getting a lot of goodbyes. So um, same to you. Goodbye from Pakistan. Okay, you bet, my friend. Um, nice to have all you guys here today, by the way. I think we had upwards of about 45 participants in the end, which is really, really good. So goodbye to all of you with your examples. So tune in tomorrow at the same time. We're gonna go deeper into another section that has to do with um, other things that can go kind of wrong and not so good when we're making decisions and committing over it. And then the good news is we're gonna do a final section. We may not have time for it tomorrow, which is how you can take responsibility for some of these things. And of course, probably already, if you haven't, I hope you can think of ways if you do have some over that you've committed or you have been dishonest a little bit, well, figure out now's the time if you're home with your parents now's the time to sit down and have a truce say okay mom dad i want to tell you some things i did or some things i didn't do and i just need you to have your focus don't be upset and just be happy that i'm going to share these things with you okay so goodbye for now and reminder that the next webinar i think is today at 1 30 with sterling 1 30 with sterling if you have any questions for me on what we've talked about today you can send an email to events at delphian.org. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for being here today. And I'm going to see if I can now successfully sign off here. Not that one.